Let's start with an experiment. I have these two spheres, and they're painted with paint that makes them conducting. They're extremely lightweight, but they have a conductive coating on them. Right now, they're both uncharged. This one is on a post that I can move back and forth. But this sphere is at the end of a rod, and it's connected to a very, very fine wire. And so there's a force which pushes it back towards an equilibrium position, but it's a very, very tiny force indeed. And this is going to serve as a balance that lets us measure extremely small forces, specifically the forces between the charges on these two spheres. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this sphere and I'm going to give it a positive charge. So right now, both these spheres are uncharged. I'm going to charge this one up positively. I want you to watch and see what happens and then we'll give you a chance to explain what you just saw. So, this sphere charged up positively, and watch what happens. The sphere on the left moved toward it, touched it, and then moved away. How can you explain what you just saw? We'll give you some choices. And of course what happened was this, when we charged up the sphere on the right positively, the conductive sphere was attracted to it. Negative charges built up on the close side, positive charges built up on the far side, and so the two were attracted to each other. But then when they touched each other, positive charges were transferred from the right sphere to the left sphere. Then they're both positively charged and they push each other apart. And I can measure the force with which they push each other apart by doing this. I can turn this torsion balance and bring it back so that the sphere on the left is exactly where it started. And when I do that, the dial here gives me a measure of how much force I need to apply to bring it back to where it started. And so therefore, it gives me a measure of the force between these two spheres. So we can use this to make a quantitative investigation of the force between charges. And let's do a couple of experiments. First, I'm going to start by discharging these two spheres. And this wire is connected to earth ground. And so I'm going to take the charges away. I'll bring the force back to zero and let the two spheres rest at their equilibrium position. Now let's make the two spheres just touch each other. So the reading on the scale is going to give us the distance between the centers of the spheres. Okay? And the spheres have some size to them. So right now, the distance between the centers of the spheres is about three centimeters. So there's a three centimeter difference with distance between the centers of the two spheres. I'm going to move this a little bit farther apart. So now the spheres are six centimeters apart. I'm going to charge them both up to the same positive charge. And when I do that, they repel, as we know they must. Now we can turn this dial and figure out how much force we have to apply to bring them back into equilibrium. And that force is just a measure of how much force there is between the two due to the positive charges. And I have to apply a force of 30 on this dial, and don't worry about the units, but 30 on this dial to bring them back so that they're back in balance with each other. Now, if I take these two spheres and move them farther apart, so I move them so that they're 12 centimeters between their center instead of 6 centimeters between their center. Here's a question. How would that change the force between the two spheres? We'll give you some choices. Now, I think you suspect that if you move the two spheres farther apart, there'll be a smaller force between them. And in fact, let's measure and see if that's the case. So we'll charge them up exactly the same amount as we charged them up before. There is a repulsive force between the two. But how much force do I have to apply to bring them back into balance? Before, I had to apply a force that was equal to 30. And in this case, I have to supply a force 
of 7.5, one quarter of the force that we saw previously. So I've doubled the distance and I've cut the force by a factor of four. So the force is proportional to one over the square of the distance. And that's something you'll learn about in chapter 20 that we call Coulomb's Law. The force is proportional to the magnitudes of the two charges, and it's inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two centers. Now, let's take a look at one more problem having to do with Coulomb's Law. If I adjust this dial, I can change the voltage. And if I change the voltage, I can change the charge that we put on the two spheres. So I'm going to put it back to six centimeters. I'll discharge the two spheres. And I'll put the force back so that it's balanced. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to decrease the charge on each of these two spheres by one half from what it was previously. So initially, when I charge them up with the full charge, let's call it Q, each of these gets a charge Q, the force was 30. Now I'm going to charge each of them up to a charge of one half Q. 30 is the force when I have Q and Q, when I have one half Q and one half Q. What would you expect for the force between the two charges? We'll give you some choices. Well, the force is proportional to the product of the magnitude of the two charges. And so if each of the charges is one half what it was before, the force is proportional to the magnitude of the two charges. And so the force is proportional to one half Q times one half Q, one quarter what it was before. And so we'd predict a force of 7.5 to bring them back into balance. In fact, that's exactly what we observe. So we'll use Coulomb's law to calculate the force between different charges. And you'll see a number of different examples in the chapter where you have a chance to do that. There's a force between these two charges, and they're not touching each other. How does this charge right here know that this charge is here? How does it know? that it should be experiencing a repulsive force. That's a concept known as the electric field, and that's something we'll talk about in the next segment.